So then on days I don't have the camera, I go to YouTube, watch how to shoot with a professional camera. So watching beginning ISO, so that's where I was like, okay. So when I watch, I'm like, hey, this is what this thing does. So naturally, I better use your camera. So when I take his camera, mm -hmm. I make sure that I practice every single thing I watch in the, in the, in, videos. In the video. Yeah. So then I kept watching tutorials and I and I was like, I kept seeing new stuff, shooting natural light, shooting reflector. Hey, what's reflector? Uh, what it does, eh? Oh, no one of those people just look like that, you know. Mm -hmm. I have to try this. Yeah. I'll the camera again. Yeah. I look for someone to shoot. So, as time went on, I, I ended up buying the camera from himself. Yeah. <laughs> what camera was that? I have a T-Canon uh, Rebel T4i. What's up, guys? Hope you're doing great. This is your boy, Copy Shots. In today's video, I have yet another talk for you on Creative Chat. Just like we've been doing it over here where we go into the lives of fellow creatives as they inspire us with their story. Next to me is one person that I really admire. I've been admiring him ever since I started doing photography because he's, in, he's a very big inspiration. He actually remotely tutored me as I watched his every move when he was into portraiture and when he even started doing weddings. So, um... Much more than honored to have you here, Mr. Click. That's right. Kofi. And uh, I wouldn't take it from him. I will allow him to do the intro himself, like I always allow my guests to do. But I don't want this to be like formal too much. Mm. You can even ask questions if you want, oh, no because this is always supposed to be a talk where we interact and, you know, we commune to, I mean, make our people watching us understand every bit about you, particularly. And you can also motivate them with your story. All right, so you're welcome once again. Can you give us a brief background about who you are, what you do, and of course, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself and your endeavor so that someone can be motivated, you know, by your story. <laughs> All right, so um, just like you said, this is Clay Kofi, not as a brand. But as a person, Klikovi is a brand all right, but yeah, everybody calls me Klik, even though that's not my name. <laughs> my actual name is Nana Kofu Sechre, a.k.a. General Akpasu. I'm a creative director and sometimes a photographer at Klikovi. You know, sometimes? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> because it's, right now, the, the brand is made up of a lot of individuals. So, okay. Yeah, so it's more of teamwork. Yeah. So I don't do all the magic by myself. Yeah. There's no way someone can... can um, to mm -hmm. make Everything. a building yeah. a building without having support. Support, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Then, I always need some help in hand. This is basically the face people really see out there. So they, they keep saying, oh, click coffee, click. but this is not click coffee. Like, you understand? Click coffee is a bigger umbrella, a bigger umbrella that has a lot, a lot of, of creatives. You know, branches and all that. Uh, yes. But then people say click coffee, so fine, I'll add it. <laughs> click coffee for now. But I've told you that this thing, the seal already, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A lot. Take us back into your childhood, how you got inspired into becoming the creative you are. Okay. All right. You do photography and, of course, filmmaking as well. We'll go into that, but I just want us to, you know, work with you from the very, very beginning, from the onset. Mm, um, when I came out from my stomach, came out, so <laughs> so the environment. I was not happy because I, I would have preferred to be in the States, but as it Not here like, in Ghana. <laughs> we think I'm like that. So I went to start right preparatory school, that's somewhere around... Um, CFC Estate, yes. Okay. And then from there, I went to Hamburg International. It's a German school. It was owned by a, a, a German. Okay. So I went to kindergarten till I completed um, junior high. And I fed my education at the only school in Ghana. And I'm not even bragging about it because, Charlie, it's a fact. Presbyterian Boys Secondary School, they go I have to be specific because yeah. like they have yeah. different ones. A whole lot of them. Some at Usu <laughs> and the rest. And the rest. I hope you don't get, be offended, but <laughs> Presec Legon, that is the original yeah. one. Mm. Presec Legon, I did visual arts in Presec Legon. Okay. And then I went to further my education at the Economic University of Science Technology, KNC yeah. for short. So I have a degree in painting and sculpture. So basically, okay. I have a whole background of. In art. In art. Yeah. From yeah. sculpting to carving to painting to drawing shading. So I, th I think this is also something that has influenced your liking life, yeah. in you know in photography. Yes. Or your interest, you stirred the interest up in yes. photography. Yes. Yeah. Regards to colors and lighting. Yes. Because in picture making and in art in general, these are the basic ingredients that you need to 
create and to create that space, yeah. So, yeah, basically it. Um, during my stay in um, Presec, mm -hmm. I unconsciously like develop a love for taking pictures because um, in my class, I did this thing where I went to all the good schools in Ghana. Like, I visited all the good schools in Ghana. The female ones to be specific, the girls' schools. And I did <laughs> this whole class link for my classmates. So, like, if I go to Gail, for example, I go to the visual class, I get in contact, I, I get their, their names and their numbers, I come to class, then we do swapping, you know what I'm saying? Like, we match, yeah. make matches. So... During all those trips, there was this. I have a classmate who had a digital camera, mm -hmm. so I borrow his camera. I'll take pictures of some of the girls or some of what, whatever the kids that happened in the school. Most yeah. of them were fan fairs, so I take pictures. We come and sit down in class, watch and laugh. And trust me, it's unprescribed to have such kids in school, but <laughs> when some boys can be stubborn, yeah, we had a laptop, I had phones in school, but in school, I was never caught. <laughs> don't, please don't do that. It's not good. Unless okay. you don't get caught, I mean. Don't do it. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Eh? <laughs> so, yeah, so it became a thing. I'll go, I'll go to the Brie Girls. And at the most drama club, I've been, I've been in drama clubs from kindergarten to date. I, I was once Joseph. I've been uh, Jesus before. I've been a Jewman in church drama. <laughs> like my entire life, I'm, it was all about drama club. Drama. Yeah. I mean, pre I was a drama club. Wow. Yeah, and uh, pe the people in the Brigos uh, like, like knew me a lot because of one particular drama that I did, and everybody was crazy about it. It made mm -hmm. me popular. Mm -hmm. So people know me to be someone who does drama, drama, drama. But mm -hmm. along the line, the photography was also there unconsciously, but didn't yeah. really put in much effort in it. It was just about capturing moments for my classmates and I to sit down and laugh and gossip about it. And also for kids, for archives, for future use. Yes. I remember I also have this collection in school where I was taking pictures of people sleeping. So I have, I have I got a sleep collection. So all those who are sleeping in class and I have pictures of them. And I'm Do you still have it till date? Hey, it's, I have this. <laughs> it's on my old laptop. The one I was using in school. It's still there. It's still so there. Then it's I always there. It should be there. Threaten my, my mate and be like, hey, if miss me, I'll leak your, your sleep collection. <laughs> your sleep collection. Yeah, just for the whole collection. Of it. A whole collection. <laughs> so yeah, so in Ken UST, uh -huh. when we, um, we got to school, I would have loved to pursue the drama thing, but then there was no. Are you really finding a group to actually join? Uh, so yeah. the photography thing was still there, but it was more of editing. Okay. I knew more of the editing side than taking of the picture because you didn't take that camera is automatic. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of just uh, point to shoot. How the point, yeah. point, point to shoot. Yeah. So I didn't have vast knowledge on how the camera works because everything was basically automatic. Automatic. Aha. Uh -huh. But then as we were in school. You know, when you come to the union and things, you want to get free, you want to get TV and microwave mm -hmm. and in your, your rooms. You think my mother will give me money to go and buy to TV buy. to put in my room? No way. No. <laughs> and of course, if you need those things, you have to, you have to get money, right? For yourself. My mother was like, yeah. ah, you, can, you know how to edit. Why don't you do As photography well. yeah. and at least go to, and get money to do something like, oh. I was like, nah, you can actually make money from this. Okay, so, so it actually started from a friend. Let's say a suggestion yes, made by a friend. a suggestion friend. made by a friend. Wow. I knew how to edit. Mm -hmm. And then... I used to um, like edit pictures of my my roommates and that of his friends, like emotional friends, and they were yeah. quite impressed. They're like, oh, Charlie, you are editing the bill. So why not go do? I'm serious. And I put it for the school. They take do business. You know, I say, oh, okay, you. I, I will see. My first like, nah, you have to start by creating an Instagram page. Okay. And at the time, I was using a Nokia. And in which Nokia year exactly was like this? 2014. Okay. okay. Wait. Nah. When I created a page, it should be 2013, thereabout. Mm -hmm. 2013. That's when I created a page. And then, like, late 2013. Oh, all right. That's when I created a page. So, but I, was, I wasn't really posting much. I think after the session, I created a logo. Oh, okay. Yeah, so how the name became about self Christ is even funny. Mm -hmm. Because so, I wanted to ask yeah, about that because so, there's always a very interesting story behind every brand name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the name was coined from SHS. So it was not even uni. Oh. So what I was taking those pictures like that for the fun of it, I was like, hey, so if you photograph a crowd, like, well, the name they go call you. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh. Then he was like, coffee photograph. I'm like, ah, nah. that sounds so funny. <laughs> so then was, And the one guy was like, click. I was like, ah, what would this? And he said, Click coffee. I was like, ah, 
when they come, when we be click off, you know they sound nice, cry. Probably that, from how he pronounced yes, it. Yes. Yeah. And that conversation died. Okay. So later, when I was trying to click, um, create the creation, I was like, ah, if you say, you know, I go use. I was like, oh, me, like what? You, I, was, I was like, ah, I can't tell me somebody to make a use click. click. Said, yeah, that name is good. Was like, are you sure? Ah, it'd be good. Why? His name is my friend's name is Idio Isando. Yeah, my roommate at that time, first year. Was was in what? Engineering, yeah, I was in engineering. Mm. Yeah. Funny enough, all my roommates have been science students too. From SHS <laughs> and everything. Science students in Quan happy to be the only visual student. Only visual student, yeah. So it was like, oh, Charlie would be nice for us. Okay, fine. So I created the Clicofi handle and then <clears throat> it was time for the logo. So I uh, I put it in, a, in my, my uh, group chat. We I had a group chat from, from Presec, my okay. classmates. We have, I was like, Charlie. Um, I, I want design logo for my band of Click Coffee. Uh, the name that you, uh, uh, Max, I said, he was saying laughing. I ah, use the name. So, name. Uh-huh. so it's like, so then I I designed the Click Coffee in a way. And the one guy, a friend of mine, Samuel Samuel Debra, he's in the UK right now. So he was like, ah, if you, if you draw him plus camera, I go build. The other guy, the other thing, was like, yeah. So then I did the design, and then. I did a design, I posted, then, then some of them did another one. I was like, now nah, if you make a kill, like the kill, make like camera, like go be what? So then everyone was adding Many their two cents. Yeah. So that's was like, nah, tell this one they be, make you do them this way. So the look and everything came from my classmates, so it was not wow. just me. So after getting that on paper, at that time, um, Gog, I think I, we got second year. Yeah, it was second year, yes. And then Gog was in first year. Okay. Yeah, so. When I designed, I was like, ah, Gog. Gog knew how to use last year and stuff. Like, ah, Charlie, design this for me. So Gog was the one who designed the logo. So from sketch, he was the one who put it in zoo into like a, a natural PNG file, this thing, depending on what you call it. Yeah. So yeah. he was yeah. the one who designed it. Okay. Yes. Okay. And the look of it, you can readily see the lens made out of the cube. Yes. And the design of the, um, should I say the shape of it? It's a ring. A ring. <laughs> I think the ring came in later on, later right? On, came in later, later on. on. We'll go into yeah. that, I mean, yeah. into the weddings aspect of things. Yeah. But the form of a camera that actually puts it all together makes it make sense, a whole yeah. lot of sense. And the moment you you see it, you set your eyes on it, you can tell that this has a relationship with photography yes. or cameras. Yes. Yes. And it's a very unique, you know, yeah. piece of art. I'm telling and you. And I think... You see, when a lot of suggestions are welcomed, you can be able to put them all together. Yes. You know, you know, look at the positives of each and, you know, try and fuse them all together. Exactly. Yeah. And, I mean, it always works most of the time. So, it's, 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 all, it's always very ideal or um, advisable to, um, you know, welcome Other ideas. opinions. Yeah. yeah opinions. With open arms. And I think it will send you a long way. Just like it did with the design of your logo. And, yeah. I, and I really like yeah. the look of it. That's, that's, I really like the look of it. True. So Gog actually designed that. Yeah. All right. He, and he uh, yeah. put a design to life. To, yes, uh-huh. yes, yes. So you, well, all that you had to do was to just explain to him how you wanted it to look oh, like. Oh, I did uh-huh. a sketch on the a sketch. paper. sketch, okay. This is it. Okay. And he did it. That was cool. He created a digital form of the it. The digital form of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this will, like, was a collect, collective idea yes. from my classmates. From your classmates. Yeah. And it looks so nice. Guys, I, I mean, it's actually here. You can see it right now. It looks so good. Yes, of course, in front of the cap that he's wearing. At oh, yeah. Yes. So, um, I mean, you've spoken about your childhood, how you, you know, got yourself involved in art and how it informed your interest in doing photography. Yeah. So how did photography itself start as a business for you? Well, like I said, mm. the, um, the influence by my roommate's yeah. idea of doing it to earn money, to mm-hmm. go to afford some of the things that I want, like the pimping room of, yeah. uh, you know what I'm saying, university students, you want to have a TV, yeah. and the stuff. Yeah. And obviously parents, you know, they send, uh, our contemporary parents <laughs> will not allow you to say that, ah, take money and go and buy AC. No, they will never do that. And TV. Are you there to watch TV? Are you there to learn? <laughs> you, get my, you get my point? Yeah. And then we are growing. As young men, you want to do this on our own and we want to be men. Yes. You and feel that? like self-reliant. Exactly. So we mm. don't want to always to be mommy and daddy. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. 
So then I was like, yeah, it's not, it's not really a bad idea. So if I can get this money, hey, then I can actually buy a camera and equipment and do more stuff. Oh, yeah, it's true. So then um, I have this friend of mine. We have to share the same name. I, I like to address him as my cousin because we have the, say, the same same name. Uh, there was this group I created on Facebook that was titled my same name because I didn't grow up my father and I didn't know relatives from my father's side. So I added everybody that had my same name okay. in hopes that I'll find my relatives. Wow. So he happened to be in that group and then we shared a mutual friend. The name is Bene Wabuati. Yes, yes, yes. So Bene Wabuati knows I do editing and this stuff. Mm. And she knows that um, my cousin, his name is Victor Owusu Sejre. Mm -hmm. Yes, people call him Victor Gray. He has a camera, he takes pictures. So he knows that ah, he's coming to take. And he, he's come to Kenya, he does pictures. And I do editing. And I was like, ah, don't do you know any guy called Danako Owusu Sejre? I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to go with that. He's so in take with that I was like, oh, really? So then when he found out, he found that out, he had been looking for me for a long time. I didn't even know. Oh, I You see. understand? Yeah. yeah, I didn't know who he was. Uh, I know that there's someone in the group by that name, but I haven't seen him, like, physically. Yeah. So he was looking for me at report. And you know, in Kenya, see, after first, you're not in a traditional house, yeah, again, house anymore. Unless yeah. you have a prefectural position. Yeah. So he came there looking for me. I was telling people that he's looking for clay coffee and stuff. Nobody knows that. Yeah, the you name. buy that name. Yeah. No, this is a clay coffee. What's clay coffee? No. Was mentioning my name, but then report me. I tear my name for the people. People call me, huh? No. Or, or, or mechanical kikilizer. That's how people know me there. Oh, okay. You understand? Yeah. If, if, we, if we say mechanical kikilizer, they don't know who I was. So he came there asking for the, the, the names. We were like, I don't know who that is. So I think he messaged me on Facebook or something. That's how come I knew that. Okay, so this guy is then like, oh, so we met. We met a report and was so excited to see me. me too. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I've met my relative. You yeah. understand? So to cut the whole story short, he does the photography and I do the editing. Oh. So through that, I kept asking him, I was like, ah, so this thing, button that you press, what does it do? Then he explained to me that, oh, this button, when you want to, you press it back into focus, you press it to take, take your pictures. And this lens is this. I was like, ah, yeah, this camera. So when I was like, ah, so would you mind if I borrow the camera and take pictures? I was like, oh, yo, why not? Okay. So then on days I don't have the camera, I go to YouTube, watch how to shoot with a professional camera. So watching beginner ISO, so that's I was like, okay. So when I watch, I'm like, hey, this is what this thing does. So naturally, I better use your camera. So when I take his camera, mm -hmm. I make sure that I practice every single thing I watch in the, in the, in the video. In the video. Yeah. So then I kept watching tutorials and I and I was like, I kept seeing new stuff, shooting natural light, shooting reflector. Hey, what's reflector? Oh, uh, what it does, eh? Oh, uh, no one of those people just look like that, you know. Mm -hmm. I have to try this. Yeah. I'll take the camera again. Yeah. I look for someone to shoot. So as time went on, I, I ended up buying the camera from himself. Yeah. He, <laughs> what camera was that? The Canon uh, Rebel T4i. Oh, okay. So that's what he, he started out with. He couldn't pursue the photography because he, he was doing architecture and, and that took most of his time. So yeah, yeah. He sold the camera to me. So when I got that camera, I, I started mastering and creating magic with the little I had. Yeah. So it was the camera and then he had a speed light. So I, and at that time, I started seeing people doing strobing and stuff. How can I strobe with a camera and an on flash? Yeah. So yeah. I started compromise, like utilizing the use of a reflector. So I would actually put the camera on the, the, the flash, flash on the camera, mm -hmm. tilt the, the light the flash the towards the reflector. reflector and it bounces back. So it was giving me the, the feel of a strobe. Strobe. And the first person I practiced that with was your classmates, Ifia and uh, Pepra. Okay, um, Joshua. Yes. Uh, Jonathan. Jonathan Pepra. Jonathan, yes. yes. Yeah. So and that was around the parade ground or something. No, no parade ground. The, the Great Hall. Yeah. The street that goes down to the the, the bungalows of the the lecturers down the street. The if you are facing, if the tennis court is on your right, mm -hmm. if you read the the gate was on your left, or the, the junction there, you go that straight down uh, that road. Is it towards um, towards engineering that bridge? No. Yes. 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 Engineering yes. Down, yes. So, yeah. so that was when I did my first. <laughs> I was so excited. So what we're doing is we're just. Doing trial and error yeah. to see which angle works best. Best, yes. When you found that angle, Tali, we cannot move. Stay right Stay there. Stay right there. <laughs> ah, it was fun. So uh, along the line, when I when I could afford this little little equipment, it was a step by step process. I was not mm. in a rush. Yeah. Totally. I was just making the best out of the little I had. Yes. So it was quite continuous to such a point that if I so first I have a camera in my hand, no matter what that I have available, I can still create magic. Mm -hmm. Because I mm -hmm. took my time to master the craft, 
from one step at a time. I didn't just get and started strobing. Oh. I learned natural light, then I went to speed light, then I went to reflector, then I went to um, umbrellas, okay. then uh, octabox. Okay, okay. We are using the trigger. Okay. Then two lights, octabox, and re- it was step so by like, step. The sequence was right. I think it's, it's, it's all ascribed to the fact that you took the time or the liberty to watch videos. Yes. So you knew what to follow one exactly. after the other. Exactly. Like that. Because some people just start out in photography and they want to buy a flash. They want to buy, they've seen someone using a strobe. Yeah. They've seen someone using 8600, so for instance. Use they also want to use it. Otherwise, their pictures will not look yeah. as good, which is very wrong. Mm-hmm. So taking the time out to watch videos on YouTube really informed and influenced your purchasing decisions. It does. Because yes. I can be in class, I'll yeah. tell lectures. 50% of my mind is what they are teaching them, but 50% is, is, is Charlie, what you, am I going to watch next? So I was always alone to tutorials, every time. I've ended up sharing the story house so as far as people in the United and States I, and Canada. And I even also, also had a piece of it, yeah. which will come later on into the story. Because, yeah. guys, if I should tell you how much of an influence, a positive influence for that matter, Click Coffee has been in my brand, in my life, I mean, as a whole, it's so much to tell. We'll get into that. <laughs> so yeah, we yeah, watched tutorials, tutorials and all that. Charlie. <laughs> I just kept downloading and downloading. Every time I something, hey, what's this? I download it. But then I was following lots of channels. So yeah. every time what I see, I have to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. And my mind has to be better. Yes. And all this while I didn't even, I, I didn't know how to do that whole retouching frequency position was not a thing. It was more of Lightroom, small spot remover and yeah. brush on the skin. That was it. So um after school, I think my first job. I think I've talked about my first, the first job I ever did. Okay. And as with that money, I, I think I give half to my cousin. I use half to buy a trigger. So that's how come the struggle oh. came along the line. And yeah. The first job was with Cindy, Cindy for Isabel. And it was a birthday shoot. I was so nervous. I didn't know what to mm. do. Yeah. I've been shot in a birthday shoot before. I took umbrella, I took everything. Everything. I, I didn't even <laughs> use all these things. Yeah, sure. But Charlie. We, we still took them just in case the, the, the need. Should in case, yeah, yeah the need that rose. It, it was not bad. She liked it. Yeah. I got another booking from, from that, that uh, birthday shoot. Through and that, yeah. It became a continuous thing. It's yeah, before people you referring know, you and all the, that. The name was all over campus. People wow. were interested. Who yes. wanted to do a shoot, blah, blah, blah. It was fun, right? Yeah. And yeah. you know something about your work, the consistency, even from the onset, looking at how far you've come, your work has had this consistent look throughout. Though you see a huge um, improvement from way down below when you started out upwards, but it still has this feature that talks about you. I don't even have to see your logo, but I can tell this work is from Click Coffee. And that's the touch. That's, I think, the point where every photographer should target to get to, so that their work can be identified by the look of it and not to be identified by, you know, let's say a mark, a written mark that identifies them. So the style is very important that you develop it. But if I should ask you a question, how did you develop your style? How did you know that this is what you were interested in and I need to you know, add some finesse or some spice to it to develop it to make it better? I think um, it's an unconscious thing that happens to every artist. Okay. Uh, every, yeah. every artist have what they perceive as beautiful and not beautiful. Yeah. So when it comes to... Um, what you just mentioned, the style of the style, yeah. It's mostly the color grading. Yes. And these are colors that I feel like should be in the image and to make it look more appealing to me. Okay. Because I'm the artist. Yeah. If you get my point. And with time, even if you try to try something that is vastly different, mm-hmm. your eye doesn't really accept you going away. Even though you yes. might make some modifications. Yes. There's, there will still be a little trade, and that's what we're talking yeah. about. That yeah. even though there are some variations, you yes. can still see that that yeah. unique thing that is still there. Look is there. And it's very unconscious. Yeah, it's just choice of colors. You yes. understand? And another thing that I think you are trying to uh, drive at is how I like to show vast contrast between the subjects and the, and and the, the background. background. Yeah. Because I always want your attention to be drawn to the subject when you look at the picture, not necessarily the entire image, even though the entire image. Mm-hmm adds harmony to the, picture. Yes, to the picture. But I still want attention to be drawn to the subject. So I try to counter all distracting elements in the picture and make your focus go onto the so subject. So if so. it's going to be a light on the subject, the light has to be concentrated on the subject and the yes. background should be, you know, I mean, sh- should I say underexposed so that it doesn't take a lot away from yes. the point of focus. Yes. And I think I got influenced through that too. Because looking at my work, 
I'm sure. I'm pretty sure because I was I was using your work as a guide. Trust me. When I started color grading, I I never spoke about this ever to. Well, yeah, someone anyone, once told me that uh, be like my work looks work like, like yeah, yeah. A lot of people were telling me too. Mm. So it was a it was I, I would say it was a conscious effort actually because I like the look of your work, and to improve, I felt that how about trying to mimic someone and see if I can still with my own process by by not asking you how mm. you got to that particular destination, using my own means to achieve that look. And that's how I learned how to join colors, push in colors, using color balance and all that. Yeah, because along the line, yeah. you, you, you end up learning things on your own. Yes. You're like, ah, this can do this. Because that's yes. what I, I did too. Yeah. Because uh, from people that I was, uh, from the people that I was watching online, I was yeah. like, how did this guy do this? So I tried to find alternatives, like, yeah. To, to arrive at the same result. And I end up being something that was like, wow, this is even way better. Mm -hmm. Wow, what's this? Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So all, during all those times of experimenting and trying to get a particular look influenced my, should I say, photographical encyclopedia, if I yeah. put it that way. I mean, that's right. I mean, uh -huh. encyclopedia. So yes. then in every situation, I know what and what to do to arrive at a particular or look. desired look. Yeah. So once I have a picture, before I even start clicking the button, I know what I'm going to do already. Yes. I've seen the errors in it. Yes. And I know how to start with them. Because all those Nungu Nungu has passing to, to get some particular looks Look. and stuff all has informed me on other ways of tackling other yes. issues. So And sometimes you, uh, may, you may not like the look of something, but it will be that particular method you used will be applicable in a different, in a different scenario. Yes, exactly. Yes. Exactly. So, I mean, in photography, I don't see anything as a mistake, yeah. but it's only a mistake when you didn't intend that particular yeah. outcome. Yeah, yes. that's true. So, in your own words, what would be the definition of a perfect picture? Um, the societal standard of a perfect <laughs> picture is when you have good framing mm -hmm. or composition, yes. good lighting, and then... Um, good pose from your model you pose yeah. your model properly the posing is very important you can have everything on point but if your model is not positioned properly or posed properly it's cost 90. yes and they pull people barely look at the kind of lighting you use the human being the picture they're looking at yeah so if the woman is not looking appealing then you failed yeah true. you get my point <laughs> all the other things help in making the picture look desirable but mm -hmm. your main focus is the subject you have to probably pose a person and make a person look beautiful yeah we draw with the light to we make do. you look more appealing, appealing to, oh, to so the eyes. Yeah. Good lighting, composition, the model, yeah. the model's poses. Yeah. And the model choice counts. Yes. And the kind of light you all these things are very important. You spoke about all these things and you never mentioned anything about camera. People think that getting the best camera, the the new release, mm -hmm. is always the way to go. It's Someone wants to buy a camera that Clay Kofi uses because I know that the five DS are gives you a lot of resolution and because Klikofi is using it probably that's how he's able to achieve the look that he can you debunk that <laughs> i'm a car guy so i always put this in the car way. <laughs> yeah you can have a, a bugatti a bugatti has loads of horsepower probably mm -hmm. around thousand four thousand five horsepower thereabout if you're not a good driver once you step on the accelerator you, if you can't handle the power the car will throw you true you have an accident yes so imagine having an expensive camera and mm -hmm. you know how to use it mm -hmm. it's cost 90. it's cost 90. If you have a cheaper so one, you know, how to, you know how to use it. Yeah. Ah. So that, that's basically it. It's a, it's a output, or the, to me, it's an output of the entire picture that matters. Yeah. Nobody cares about what went into the picture, yeah. whether you use this camera or this lens or whatever. Yeah. It's the output is what matters. No, but, Nobody yeah, cares about the journey. Matters. All they've seen that it is this is the result yes nobody cares about what the caterer uses for her food and no. the spices wow it's sweet hey that's what they care that's about what is, yeah you understand what i mean so yeah. the gear gear is important but it's not anything you should kill yourself over. over you need to just get what you need not what you want, want. yes if you have a and a can do the job why should you go for something else mm -hmm. it's, to me it's a waste of money mm -hmm. Nobody mm -hmm. can tell that this picture was shot from a 5DSR or shot from a Sony A7 yeah. IV or a Fuji, Fuji. X4 or whatever or it is. Whatever it is. <laughs> a Canon um, R5. R5. Nobody, R6. Know, nobody knows. They have seen a picture. Yeah, and even on social media platforms is where most photographers display their work. And even those platforms compress the images. Yes. So I had a deal. 
What's the that resolution that you're running even, after? Ah, it doesn't even, it doesn't do anything. I still use my Canon EOS 6D to date. I've been using it for like six years, and it still works. Exactly. I can take even fine if I get the opportunity to use um, upgrades. It's because of some particular features that will come in handy yes. in my techniques. Yes. Because I understand what those features are for. Exactly. But if I don't have it, it doesn't mean that my work should suffer. Yeah. In its look, it still becomes. Should I say a platform where I can maximize the use of something minimal yeah. in the eyes of today? You yeah. understand what I mean? So, I mean, it's all about your intellect and how you approach whatever uh, circumstances with the gear that you have in, in your hands. Yeah. All right. So, we've spoken a whole lot about how you started out and how far you've come. Still talking about how far you've come, you do a lot of weddings. Clickoffee has been shooting a whole lot of weddings, a whole lot. Small Can you even count the number of weddings you've shot? I don't even count two. <laughs> you can't count. It's actually uncountable. And, you know, there are a lot of experiences with weddings. Personally, I don't shoot weddings as much because of a thing or two. Yeah. But, you know, um, because I create a lot of content here and there, I need most of the time. Yeah. People wanting to jump into wedding photography, lots of them are just chasing the money. They don't know about the circumstances. They don't know about the challenges they are going to face. If someone was to ask you, what are the challenges, to be very blunt and to be very honest, what hmm. would you say to that person? I think to, to be a wedding photographer, eh, you really have to be a people's person. Yes. Because if you are not, you, you'll be frustrated. Because mm -hmm. you end up experiencing different kinds of people from different kinds of uh, generations and backgrounds. Yeah. So if you don't have the, the, um, the heart of being tolerant, tolerant. trust yeah. me, You'll be for sure that you fight and uh, you'll be tired. Because <laughs> there's some people who, who have pride and don't value the use of a photographer. They see, and they, some of them see you to be, excuse me to say, a peasant. And like, you yeah. are like. And, and what, what makes that so? What makes people, let's say clients and let's say for their family members, what will make them insinuate that because you're a photographer, mm -hmm. you are. I mean, you're just anybody that I can just address. Oh, it's just... What, what brought it about? It's just Bro important manners. Yeah. They're just okay. people who don't have good manners. Okay. <laughs> no matter who you are, where you're from, you respect anybody from any kind of occupation. Yeah. Whether the person is a baller man or whatever. Whatever. Without this baller man, how will your rubbish vanish from your house? Mm -hmm. Everybody's important. So you just yes. have to treat everybody equally. Yes. It's people who don't treat people properly are people who don't have manners. And when yes. they're not brought up properly. That's all. So should someone encounter that? Because definitely in weddings, you can never avoid that. Oh. That's inevitable. Yeah, a lot of... Yes. What would be your approach towards that? Should you be confronted by any kind of misbehavior? You just, from, you just avoid yeah. them. Okay. And how the do you more, go about that? And, and the more you entertain, should I just say stupidity, Okay. chaos follows. Yes. And you, you just add more fuel to the, to the fire. Yeah. So as a photographer and professional, you just ignore it and let your clients know that this is a situation that's hardly. Yeah. This situation that you are going through and let yes. them handle it themselves. Okay. So me, when I see drama and stuff, I don't talk plain to you. Mm. Let's go to the couple. Um, this is what's happening. It's affecting my work. And I just want you to know in case I'm not going to do A, B, C. This is the reason because why. Of this. But okay. if you can address it, please do. Mm -hmm. Simple. Me, I don't waste. Ah, I don't have time to do the argument and stuff. Especially like our fellow vendors <laughs> when it comes to example like food sharing and stuff. That's a, a different topic. Oh. It's a whole different topic on its own. <laughs> When I, for example, when I when I come and probably ask for a drink or, and you are like, you are not serving now. You have seven guests first, or it's not time. I don't come and ask you again. This, yeah. oh, I'm worried myself. I just there are a lot of wahala when it comes to shooting wedding, but I just ignore and avoid them because mm -hmm. it's not worth it. At the end of the day, my aim is to capture moments. Yes. So I don't let some of these things get in my way. Yeah. If it bothers me, I'll tell the couple. Or if it goes against the contract, I'll tell the person who paid me yes. that this is happening. Or if I can't speak to them, I speak to their planner yeah. to do that. And then it's sorted out. Yes. So if you are not a people's person, you can't deal with these things, yeah, it's not for you. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you meet people from different kinds of backgrounds, families, the way they see things. Yeah. There's this, there was even this scenario where one of mm -hmm. my colleagues was given a souvenir at the wedding. And the bride man that came was like, ah, I hope that souvenir I'm holding is not for, for you. I hope, say, it's not for you. And, and I was like, oh, mommy, please, they was giving it to me. I was like, which stupid human being gave you this, this gift? Were you put here to work or to receive gifts? For real? Yeah, that's somebody. Wow. And to her, 
the way she was brought up, she said that's the right thing to do. Yeah, that's what she yeah. did. Some other families were like, oh, it's oh, yeah, it's for, it's a wedding, it's a gift. Yeah. Take what you want. We, there's, I've been to a wedding where they do a separate table for, for the vendors, do serve his food, like food in a banana, you can eat. But some people, hey, why should I give you food? I've paid you. So it's everyone and their own. Yeah, very different. So you should be you just be ready, you have to be ready for drama. Yeah. You so should. when it comes, you're not surprised. You just know how to deal with it. Exactly. And if you're not comfortable, make sure you put it in your contract. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have everything in my contract. Yeah. So once you put it in the contract... That will really protect you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I have put in the contract and I'm mm-hmm. good to go. Yeah. That's all. I mean, it's, it's very true what you're saying. And um, even cons- still considering the challenges. See, there are a lot of things that encompasses wedding photography. Wedding photography isn't just about shooting people. You shoot considering fashion, food, beauty, lifestyle... A whole lot of things. Yeah. So, if someone is starting out in photography, would you advise the person to start out with weddings first? Not necessarily because of the money, mm-hmm. but to sharpen their skills. You think weddings are um, an ideal avenue to start out in photography? No. Okay. When you're driving, you don't just park the car and just go to the fit gear. You start from, from the basics. From the basics. You have to start with natural light because weddings yeah it seems when you shoot indoor you shoot outdoor yeah. how will you shoot it yeah if you don't know how to do all these busy busy things how will you do it yes you understand so you start from somewhere then you, you step by step so you can start with weddings then maybe you can start shooting your friends to know how to pose your future brides and mm-hmm. all these things what lights you should use and you can start with maybe doing small events like birthday parties to give you experience of the whole event ish feel. Yeah. You get to experience different lighting setups. So like those colors, colors lights that some of the lighting people use. Uh, how to tackle them, different ceilings. We have black ceilings, mm-hmm. some are white, some yeah. are magenta, etc. So you can be shoot low light, outdoor space, low light, or maybe the there's places for light. There are so so if you don't if you're not used to all these things. Sense. What are going to do at the wedding? You yeah. end up destroying I mean, someone's once in a lifetime event. Exactly. Like, yeah. You got, like, yeah. like you mentioned, you mentioned portraiture, lifestyle, all the uh, food, all these things all these are, are all in wedding photography. So yeah. if you don't master this individual element, what are you shooting? True. You end up shooting baller. True. So, because, because people, I mean, have this all wrong where they are actually after the money, the income, first of all. So they are not really abreast or they are not you know, in line with what they are supposed to know before they embark on a journey like, let's say, wedding photography, which is, which is very, very disheartening to see because I've come across a lot of guys who always complain that, um, my, how, how am I going to get this particular look? I've been doing this for quite a long time. And even people confront me, asking me to give them some presets, which I want to ask you a question about this. <laughs> you definitely get confronted by people asking you those questions. And when these newbies ask such a question, what do you think would be the best or the ultimate and the most ideal response to give them? Should they ask you for wedding presets because they want to have their pictures look like yours? Wedding presets, <laughs> if, if you ask me, I don't keep wedding presets. Mm-hmm. Shortcuts, aka presets, limit your knowledge on exploring different colors and options to make your image look nice. Yeah. If you are using presets, you there's this reluctant reluctancy. Yeah. Is that the right word? Yeah, reluctancy is the right word. Yeah. Well, <laughs> reluctancy in like getting to explore more. You know, the whole photography is a learning process. Yeah. So why would you be blocking your chances of knowing more by looking for shortcuts? Mm-hmm. You understand mm-hmm. what I mean? Then what what do you want to achieve? What do you want to learn? Yeah. Because art is dynamic. With regards to time, it changes. Yes. New things come and they go. Yeah. There was a time when natural lights was a whole vibe. Sun and strobing came back again. Before before the natural light was strobing. Yeah. Natural lights came. Now yeah, strobing, yeah, again. strobing again. Now continuous lighting. Then it's going to be hard light. You understand? Yeah. So if you are not in need to be in this beautiful transition and, yeah. and change, how would you grow? Yeah. How would you how would you master your craft? Yeah. Fine, you can decide to use presets, but it shouldn't be a thing that you always rely, rely on. Rely on. True. You should try and like try and create unique stuff on your own too. Yeah. That's the best way. Yeah. If I was in your shoes, whoever is watching and you want presets, I'd rather watch <laughs> whoever's picture I would like to which um have like presets from let's say the photographer. Yeah. I'd rather watch and try to imitate the look that. 
and by trying to imitate, you might even end up creating something on your own. Mm. Style that um, will even yeah. to you look better to you. Way better than what yeah, you you're understand. seeing. Yes. That's that's a that's a good way to do it. Right? Yeah. And, Wanting to get preset, preset, preset. If you ask me, I can sell my own to you. I can go and sell it to you, more. That one there, who doesn't like money? I mean, it's business. But <laughs> as I'm selling to you too, I will urge you to try and make modifications to what I already have or try to create something on your own. Yes. Using that as a guideline. Yes. That will help. I don't just buy the preset and just say that, okay, maybe I've done it, I've made it. Like, no, 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 my friend, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you have to try and create it. That should be that should act as a guideline for you. Yes. It shouldn't be a final for you. It should be a guideline. Okay, so this is how adjustments looks like in this preset. Okay, let me try and tweak this. Wow, a little better with this. Let me try. That's how we do it. Mm -hmm. Photography is a learning project. It never ends. It never ends. Yeah, it never ever ends. It never ends. So it never ends. The lighting techniques <laughs> keep changing and changing. Light we keep getting new modifiers. Godox keep really they still end up releasing different different meanwhile it's light is light. light why what would this light do for me that would be different from this light yeah you see true it's always the same yeah. they're just releasing always, and always if you keep up following you'll be making a lot of senseless yeah, yeah, purchases which you. wouldn't you know exactly you know be i mean a profit on your mm. part yes so i mean listening to all that you've said in transitions i would say that's I mean, uh, should someone starting out in photography listen to you, the person should be able to follow this guide or this as a guide yeah. to walk through to the point where he can get better and develop a style for himself or herself. So now that's all done. I can take pictures. I can edit well. My pictures look good. How do I get clients to pay for my work? How did you go through that and how did you end up, you know, being one of the most high paid wedding photographers in Ghana? So, those of you who are in a hurry to make money, please, if you're in a hurry to make money, go and sell cocoa. Because <laughs> you don't build clientele from instantly. It starts yeah. from somewhere. Yeah, it does. It's, it's, people have to value you for them to patronize your services. Yeah. So, if they don't, why should they come and pay an amount of money for you to come and do pictures for them? Yeah. What show that you deliver? Yeah. They don't know you. Yeah. So, there's no way the clients will be coming. So, you start from somewhere. So that is that is how I did mine. So I started shooting my friends, influential friends to be precise. Okay. You say that you're influential or you're good looking. Okay. Because the aim is to is to reach what? A larger a audience. A larger audience, yes. Okay. So influential people will end up recommending you to their friends, or their friends will see what, what you've done for their friend and they will be interested in it. Yeah. Beautiful people who also catch a lot of engagement and, and what audience on social media and what, what have you. Yeah. And you have to be very consistent with content creation. Yeah. Because the more you produce them, the more your your your, re your, your, your relevance re yes. stays. Yeah. Exactly. So then when you your work is flied on the internet or the market or the particular circle that you are, yeah. a lot of people also want to have that experience. Yes. Then you can start pricing. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So the more people come the more they value you. Yeah. And then the more they value you, the more work you are doing, your name is everywhere. everywhere. And people also want to have you. Yes. Then you can also start another update in your pricing. Do you get my point? Mm -hmm. And with regard to time too, it's not as if your pricing just goes up. Your work, your work too grows. Yeah. Because as a photographer, the more you shoot, the more experience you have, the more situations you encounter, and the more you work to better yourself. Yes. So it's just a beautiful growth. Yeah. But if you think you just get up one day, you buy a camera, you get client, it doesn't work that doesn't way. Work that way. And this takes a lot of time. <laughs> Do you know something funny that I just remembered mm -hmm. when you just said that? I have this friend who, after purchasing any gear, he just posted on his story or on his status new, on WhatsApp. New gadgets. My new baby. <laughs> he actually refers to it to as my mm -hmm. new baby and puts it there, thinking that that's going to call more, you know, clients. more clients into his territory, which doesn't work. I've actually confronted him and spoken to him about it that you actually have to use it. And even before purchasing it, why did you make that purchase? Why did you even have that conscious, I mean, decision making? Do you to, need it? You get the point. Because you are probably using something that can give you results as good as what you just bought. Exactly. So why then are you transitioning or why are you upgrading? And moreover, you put it on your state of without using it, thinking that it's going to call you clients. So you make up for the money that you spent. If you don't need it, doesn't make sense. Forget about it. Forget about it. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, guys, 
a whole lot has been said. You, you understand now why I said that this personality, wonderful personality, has been very influential, positive influence in my life, in my brand. And I've watched him grow into who has, he has become. And I'm also following suits so that I also better myself as a person, as a brand. Oh, right. And uh, oh, I have no boss, trust me. <laughs> there are a whole lot of people that I've been following. He's actually the very first. I always ascribe that particular veneration to him because, I mean, he's been wonderful. You wouldn't get it as easy as I got it when, you know, I was started out because a lot of people confront me and they come from different backgrounds where they didn't get it easy. But when they ask me a question, for instance, and I explain or give them a response in a huge body for them to actually read, they feel much more appreciative than, you know, just giving them a one sentence or one, you know, I mean, a very minute answer. Mm -hmm. Because I go ahead to elaborate for them to actually understand. And they really appreciate because they at least expected me to do yeah. that. Because that's normally what most of um, the high-end photographers or high-end creatives in the space wouldn't really necessarily have the time to. Because, of course, um, considering a lot of circumstances, probably they don't have time and all that. You know, they, are, they have their own life and their own problems. But I notice that people are really willing to learn. And through my growth and how I got it, I feel that if I reflect the same way that I was being taught, how I got the opportunity and the luxury to actually follow people who were willing to teach me, like you did for me, like a whole lot of people did for me as well, I mean, it is going to really change the look of things and get people to actually grow. So guys, I mean, we've said a whole lot. This is what we actually do here on the Creative Chat. We go into the lives of our fellow creatives, we learn from them, as they teach us a lot and tell us a lot about their story to get us motivated. But before we bring this to a close, I will ask Mr. Click <laughs> to give us his last words of encouragement and motivation. All right. You that you are watching right now. Yes, you this guy. <laughs> so the whole photography journey, it's not as easy as it may seem, but it's yeah. fun. Yeah. Only if you are passionate about it. Passion. If you're in for the money, it's a different story. This message is not for you. But if you're passionate about it, trust me, just take it one at a time. Don't rush. Yeah. There's no need to, to do this because this, this person is doing this and I won't do the, the, the same thing to you yeah. at the same level. Take your time and master your craft. Yeah. The whole photography process or the art learning process is like uh, a bodybuilder going to the gym. Yeah. You start from somewhere. You start doing empty bars and as time goes on, you start adding weights. You understand? Then you have to be consistent because the more you go, the better. You the, you, like, okay, I'm, I'm talking about the gyming process. The more you go to gym, the, the more but, mature you yeah, become. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the more time you spend <laughs> with the learning and the practicing process, yeah. the better you become. This is all time related. Do you get my point? You spend time, you grow. If you don't spend time, you actually grow, but then the, the pace will not be as yes. drastic as yeah. you would want it to be. Yeah. So if you really want to do this, yeah. take your time learn properly and don't be going around buying things that you don't need yes you understand don't yes. buy things that you don't need because someone has this gadget i want to get this gadget take your time master a very good to b yes understand why this thing is this thing what is used for mm -hmm. what other alternatives or which other creative way can i use it for yeah you yeah. understand just like a parabolic umbrella you can even use for a background if you can use it for a rim light you can use a, a lot of things. You get my point. So, <laughs> I'm even speaking British. Yeah, I just do this. My wife. <laughs> it's my wife. So, the me. <laughs> so, yes. So, just take your time and learn. You can start from natural light and go to artificial light and mm -hmm. learn how to blend the two and go to yeah. colored gels. Yeah. You can even do underwater, can do landscape. You understand? Try and learn a bit of everything because I don't know, really, that's most more things to learn from here. You can even influence the particular field you want to master in. You get my point. Yeah. Choices of lens and everything should be because you need it for the particular thing you want to do. So let's say you're a food photographer, you know you need a micro lens, you know, like a hundred is fine for you. Don't yeah. be going buy buying seven two hundred because yeah, it's big and you can zoom in and you don't need it. Hundred is fine, that's macro. Buy what you need and yes. save the money. Yeah. All those expensive gears, nobody cares about the gears, it's the end that matters. The outcome, exactly. the result. Yes. Nobody cares about the camera that you have. So I beg you. Mm -hmm. Use your head, use your head. <laughs> this is Nanaka Wusajre, aka Channel Akpasuman. <laughs> this is my short message for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and this has been Chris's chat. You've heard it all. 
I'm your host, and I've always been your host, Kobe Shots. And I'm going to catch you in the next video. Continue to stay inspired and be motivated. Have a wonderful day. See ya.